Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Kathy Hobbs. For me, creating a vegetable garden was always on my to-do list, but I didn't know where to begin or how to start. So for the last two months, I've been taking classes and partnering with Master Gardeners so that I could share with all of you tips on how to create a vegetable garden. In the city where I've lived for nearly 20 years, many people practice urban gardening. But in the country, you can really let your garden grow. So when asked if I could try to transform this unappealing backyard into a useful vegetable garden, I partnered with Lowe's Home Improvement Store, enlisted my mini-me as a helper, and started looking for the ideal plantings and seeds to create the perfect vegetable garden. Peppers. Peppers. These ones. Sure. Creating a garden from scratch may not be as easy as it looks. First, I have to find a location, then build a fence. I settle on this area of the backyard, which gets lots of light, which is key. And since there are lots of animals around that will want to feast on what grows, I also erect a fence and line the bottom with a weed barrier. With my little helper, we then add mulch around the fence to further keep the little animals out. Next step for me is to actually plan and lay out my garden, which is a really important part of the process. What you're looking at right here are the actual raised beds that we're going to be placing in the garden because this location is rocky. In ground planting isn't an option. I really like the idea of using a raised bed modular system, one in which you could create a number of different configurations. All you have to do is slide your board into your ends and you're good to go. Now it's finally time to plant. So what I've done here is I've actually already sorted out my seeds, determining what to grow during which month. And that's a great planting tip. That way you know what to grow during certain times of the year. Also, you can put your seeds into little Ziploc baggies. So whatever you don't use in the current season, you can use for next year. So now we're gonna plant some kale and some microgreens. One important planting tip to remember is to actually read the instructions. Now this may sound like common sense, but this actually includes instructions relating to the location, how far apart to space your seeds or your plantings, and even the month of the year in which to plant. I've decided to create a soil mix of garden soil and compost. It really helps to create a fertile soil. What I love about some of these raised beds, especially the ones that are waist height, is that you don't have to worry about bending as much. One of the aspects that I love about growing herbs is that you get this really fragrant planting. Again, as you can see, I'm cutting off the cardboard little pot that it comes in to reveal the roots. Now what I've created here is a really long bed that's actually 16 feet long. And you may want to do this too, especially for some of your fruits and vegetables that need room to grow. I wanted to share with you some garden goodies. Now these are items that you may want to purchase in order to help make a successful harvest. These are vegetable steaks and you can use these for some of your vining vegetables and fruits such as your squash, perhaps your tomatoes and even your peppers. You can use trellises as well and what you're going to want to do is use clips in order to adhere your vines to the towers. They come in a whole bunch of colors but I really like the yellow yellow and the red because it adds just that extra pop of color to your garden. We also have some bird netting in order to protect your harvest against feeding birds. And lastly, we have some garden fabric that you can use in order to help extend your harvest. I 
am absolutely thrilled with how this garden came out. A huge thank you to Lowe's for partnering with us. I love the color, the layout. I hope the owners of this garden enjoy their harvest for years to come.